gentle person who has been engaged in one of the world's most brutal occupations for more than 20 years. Meet professional wrestler Jerry Lawler, the surprisingly different man behind the mask. I am Jerry the King Lawler, and you people ought to get down on your hands and knees and kiss my feet just for the privilege of being in my presence. People love to see violence. They love to see dangerous, violent things happening to other people. 40-year-old Jerry Lawler is the heavyweight champion of the United States Wrestling Association. The USWA sounds a lot bigger than it is. The bouts take place in towns like Paducah and Evansville, where professional wrestling is the theater of the common man. If you look around to the fans out there, and ask them, hey, what do you want me to do to this guy? Well, you know, they're gonna say, kill him, punch him, knock his head off, and then bang when you do it. It's like, did that for me. Most USWA wrestlers are kids on their way up. They're all after Lawler's belt, so they can make the jump to a bigger association. So far, nobody's been able to dethrone the king. Lawler says it's because the kids are less concerned with skill than with image. They've either got to have these huge bulging muscles or, or they've either got to have a dog or a snake or a bird on their shoulder. They've got to be something that will make a kid want to go out and buy a doll. They've got to be a human, walking, living, breathing cartoon. You won't see Jerry Lawler hyping himself this way. He's just too shrewd a self-promoter. Pretty smart old wrestler named Jackie Fargo, who I used to idolize. One night, uh, when I first started, I was fixing to go out before my match and talk to the fans, and he said, hey, kid. He said, let's say you were going to a concert to see maybe Elvis Presley. And while you were sitting in your seat, waiting for him to come on, the opening act was on, you looked over and you saw Elvis walking around through the crowd, talking to the people. He said, wouldn't, they, wouldn't that take some of the mystique away from seeing him later on when he came on? I said, yeah, it would. He said, well, sit down over there. And wait till it's time for your match. Memphis, Tennessee. Jerry Lawler was born here to a working class family and still lives here today. We have the king of the ring, Jerry Lawler, on the David Page Show. Okay, Joe, go ahead. You've done more for the image of uh, Memphis than uh, anybody else I know of. Even Elvis? Particularly Elvis. As a kid, Jerry dreamed of drawing cartoons for Hallmark. I really feel like the only God-given talent that I was blessed with is art. I always got in trouble in school for drawing when I should have been studying. I would draw fantasy characters that uh, I was always fascinated with. larger-than-life hero. It's like the old Roman gladiator days. Wrestling fans live vicariously through their heroes. If I insult them personally, they appreciate it almost because they themselves were actually a part of the event. You're the star that they've come to see that night, but you have actually acknowledged them personally. Wrestling is so flamboyant, it's only natural to wonder if it's staged. Jerry Lawler won't talk about that. Almost no professional wrestler will. But when we showed him the videotape of this match, he acknowledged that he was dragging it out. Let's face it, wrestling, as is any sport, it is a form of entertainment. You're there to uh, 
please the fans. At this point right here, I could have probably beat him in, in uh, three or four minutes. But the next thing I'm going to hear is all of those thousands of people that are there, cupping their hands over their mouth and screaming, boring, boring. Boring? Just ask Paula, Jerry's wife. I don't sit ringside anymore. I stay in the back of the Coliseum uh, and just watch it from very far away. Um, because one time I got a little too close. He was wrestling a guy named Plowboy Frazier, who was huge. I got caught up in the moment. I took my shoe off, and I ran up and got on uh, Plowboy Frazier's back, and I hit him in the head. So he stood up, and he grabbed me by the back of the hair, and he grabbed Jerry by the back of his hair and rammed us together. And we both fell out on the mat. And I was shocked from this. I, I didn't even know what was going on, really. And all of a sudden, my eyes were open. I looked up, and I saw this huge leg coming down on my face. He had leg dropped me. And it was horrible. I started crying. I grabbed my face. I thought my nose had been broken. My lip was busted. And, and all I could do, I mean, I saw stars. And all I could do was just lay there and cry. You know what these are? Some of these are put up there with chains. Instead of ring ropes, they put barbed wire up around the ring. These nice four teeth right here, it used to be mine. Pulling your legs between a ring post like this, uh, that resulted in, uh, in uh, groin surgery that uh, put me out of action for, for several months. Occupational hazards, I guess. Jerry Lawler earns about $300,000 a year for these occupational hazards, some of which comes from a percentage of USWA revenues. He fights as much as five times a week and spends more time on the road than in the ring. It's a tough life, a lonely life. There's no health insurance, no corporate pension plan that will kick in when you're too worn out to continue. Doctors were right. The traveling and the, the white lines and the hotels, it's, it's boring, but it's, it's a necessary evil to do what, uh, what you love. Jerry has gone so much. I just get very lonesome. And I love you. Every okay. week, Bye. he's in a car traveling back and forth and real late at night. It scares you. A time comes when even the thrill and the excitement of being in the ring uh, doesn't make up for, for that time spent on the road. And I guess whenever that day, whenever that day comes for me, uh, that'll be the time when you, when you call it quits, hang it up. fairly exhausted at the end of the evening. There's that little feeling there that, hey, show's over, folks. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going home, okay? I gave you your money's worth inside. Don't try to get more out of me now. Let me go home.